Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss if we're going to see a subtropical storm form off the southeast coast of the United States, as well as provide an update on Francine, Tropical Depression 7, and Invest 94L. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Thursday, September 12th, 2024. The black arrow is now pointing towards post-tropical Francine, just recently up downgraded. Uh, it's no longer a tropical depression or a storm. Uh, so we are still expecting a lot of flooding from this system, from the rain that's going to produce because it's going to stall out, but no longer considered a tropical entity being tracked by the National Hurricane Center. Pink arrow is pointing towards Invest 94L, still uh, not a tropical depression or storm. Purple is Tropical Depression 7, uh, still not Tropical Storm Gordon. And then we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa in blue, as you can see on the bottom right of your screen. So here's the vorticity map showing where uh, Francine 94L, Depression 7, and the vorticity that is trying to slowly form together for the uh, disturbance number two off the southeast coast, uh, it's, that's where we're going to see that energy coalesce and potentially become a subtropical storm. And we'll show you that on the models. So here is the latest satellite image of Francine as it slowly moves up the Mississippi River Valley. Latest radar image shows all the rain that's going to be there and it's going to stall out because of high pressure to its north. Steering patterns are quite weak here so it's going to be a couple of days where this just sits over the same area so we could expect a lot of rain and flooding from this system from now until this weekend. And then the portion that actually could develop is the frontal boundary that's moving across Florida. That's going to develop a low pressure system off the southeast coast and potentially move back towards the Carolinas or Georgia uh, early next week and potentially be a subtropical storm. So here we have Tropical Depression 7, still not Gordon. It's got winds of 35 miles an hour, moving west-northwest at 16. Uh, so it is expected to become uh, our next tropical system, as you can see on the forecast map here. Cone of uncertainty keeps this one at the moment out to sea. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it just in case it does get a little close to the Caribbean islands, but right now it doesn't look like it's going to head your way. Here's the spaghetti track guidance models that the cone of uncertainty is based off of. And in terms of strength, you can see we got a wide range uh, between now and 72 hours. It looks to be a tropical storm. Uh, but then after that, it could go as strong as a Cat 1 hurricane, or it could just decrease and go back down to a tropical depression in the next seven days. Here's our close-up view of 94L, and right behind it, the remnants of 92L, still struggling to maintain thunderstorm convection and gain the wind speed necessary to even become a tropical system. It's got a 30% chance of doing so over the next two and seven days. Here you can see it's good. The center of this spin is supposed to go over the northern portion of the Lesser Antilles Islands. It's right now would have uh, winds that are just under tropical storm strength. So we're just waiting to see if it can close off that low pressure system and boost up those winds to become a tropical depression or storm. And then here is again is that close up view of the thunderstorm cluster and vorticity. It's going to try and spin up around the southeast coast of the United States, which has a 30% chance of developing over the next seven days. So let's use the GFS model to see where these systems will go over the next seven days. The black hexagon right now would be Francine. Purple is Tropical Depression 7. Pink 94L and blue is our next tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. So we have the upper level ridge that was associated with Francine, an upper level ridge near 
94L, and those two ridges are creating a trough right in the middle. So that's going to create a, a large amount of wind shear, which will rip apart 94L, even as small as it is. With that very small thunderstorm convection, it's not going to survive that, that wind shear that you can see just over Hispaniola. So that's why we're not expecting this one to develop uh, after the next 48 hours, really. It's got a 24, 48-hour window, and then it's done. And you can see it's surrounded by a lot of dry air, so that's why it's hard to maintain the thunderstorm convection at the moment. So 48 hours from now, we see the very small entity left of 94L moving north of Puerto Rico. We see by the black hexagon, which is no longer Francine, that's still over the Mississippi River Valley to the left of that hexagon. But we have that vorticity now trying to consolidate into that potential subtropical storm. Purple is still TD7, maybe Gordon at this point. And then we have the blue tropical wave, which looks to have lost a lot of its luster compared to what it looks like today. So we have our upper level environment showing the upper level trough near our black hexagon. That is what's going to allow the exhaust of the up, the winds in the upper levels to allow the storms and thunderstorms to rise and try to develop that low pressure system and strengthen it. And you can see the light wind shear environment that's going to slowly tr decrease the wind shear around that system, but then across the most much of the tropical Atlantic except where we have that blue tropical wave where we have a lot of wind shear so that's going to slowly erode, erode away at that thunderstorm convection of that tropical wave so we're not expecting that one to develop so three days from now Sunday September 15th we have a stretched out piece of vorticity by our black hexagon that is our developing non-tropical low and frontal boundary still and if we go one day forward to monday september 16th we see it breaks off from that frontal boundary so that's why this is potentially a subtropical storm that could develop if it's warm core separated from the frontal boundaries and tightens that vorticity up to tropical storm strength we could see a subtropical system form and then that low pressure system that it broke off from will just continue on and move away as well. So here's day five. It's already made its way inland across the border of North and South Carolina, our black hexagon. And we still have Tropical Depression 7 out in the middle of the main development region, but getting a little bit closer to the Caribbean islands, but shouldn't be a threat to it. And we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa in orange with a very tight ball of vorticity so we had we see an upper level ridge trying to form over that storm we'll see if that is the case five days from now light wind shear environment there would be conducive for development and we have a lot of moisture with it so if it can have that light wind shear and keep that moisture unlike the blue wave the orange wave might have potential to develop which we'll see but the model doesn't quite take it into uh, development in here, but we do see the remnants of that other piece of vorticity that broke off from our potential subtropical storm. I have it highlighted in red here. That could interact with Tropical Depression 7, potentially, and we'll see if that tries to swing either of those storms around with the Fujiwara effect, which you'll see on the European model. So here, European model, we have... Francine moving inland. We see the subtropical storm form and go towards Georgia, South Carolina border instead of North Carolina, South Carolina border. But also see how that piece of vorticity that it breaks off from also interacts with Tropical Depression 7 and then actually gives it a boost and actually strengthens Tropical Depression 7 into a more robust storm after it being absorbed from the system. So we'll see if any of this actually happens. We're still seven days out from now, but it looks like we have agreement that something is going to be moving towards the southeast coast of the United States. The question will be, will it gain any tropical characteristics and become a subtropical storm? So here's the 
ensemble models showing where the path of all these tropical entities will go over the next seven days and how strong they can get. So Francine is now post-tropical and it's just going to be a big rainmaker for the lower Mississippi River Valley. So please be aware of any flash flooding events in your neighborhood. 94L is going to move through the northern Lesser Antilles Islands. Un looks like less and less likely it's going to become a tropical system, but it's still going to bring some squally weather to you over the next couple of days. TD7 is forecast to become our next tropical storm, which would be Gordon. And then we'll see if Tropical Disturbance 2 uh, becomes anything subtropical by the time we get to it next week. Next name on the list is Gordon, and after that would be Helene. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you really like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.